Good morning. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's give God praise today. We do it like this. Jehovah. Jehovah, you I trust. I trust in you, Lord. one of you we want to go before the throne of grace in prayer heavenly father lord we want to say thank you thank you lord for blessing us to see another year we thank you god because you kept us all last year many people did not make it through last year but because of your grace and mercy you allowed us to see this year and for that we are grateful and we're thankful we know that you have a purpose for our lives which is why we are here and lord whatever our assignment is lord give us the strength and the courage and the encouragement to do it, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. But we simply ask that you be with us in our service on today. Bless the word of God, gifts given from the man of God. Allow the word to penetrate hearts and lives in the mighty name of Jesus. These things we ask in your son's name. Thank God. Amen. If any man be in Christ, 
Father, how we love you, how we bless you. Thank you for bringing us into this brand new year. Thank you for the fact that we're pushing through in 2022. We ask, oh God, that as we uh, look at your word and as we take time to gather ourselves and prepare ourselves for what you have already prepared for us in this year, I pray, Lord God, that you would galvanize us, that you would unify us, that you would bring us together on one accord under your spirit and the direction of your your son, Jesus. And I ask, oh God, in these next few moments, give me clarity of thought, 
clarity of speech that people might hear your voice and we might hear direction as to how we move together in this first month of this new year. Lord, we love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I don't have, uh, you know, normally we have this New Year's Eve service and we celebrate our way into the new year and we uh, talk about and announce the direction that the Spirit of God has given for the new year. And I can I just tell you, I, I barely made it through 2021. Uh, And so I don't have any of that. I just want to talk for a few moments and I want to talk and share my heart with the one thing I do know that I think the Spirit of God has given me as relates to our consecration. You know, normally the first month of the year uh, in January, we take time and we fast and we consecrate ourselves and we prepare ourselves for what we believe God is going to do in this next year. And so I want to kind of just take some time and talk. I don't have a whole full-on message. I don't have a word. I don't have, uh, you know, nothing that's homiletically tight. I just want to talk through some stuff that God has given me and uh, how we will approach it uh, in this month. Okay, so I want to start in Ezra chapter 8. Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Um, The story is God has moved things in the political realm of the world that his people were involved in. And through the providence and the sovereignty of God, he has allowed or he has moved the king of the empire of that time to allow the Jews to go back to their homeland and to go back and set up worship unto the one true God that they worshiped. Uh, And so Ezra, who was a priest, he was of the priestly line, but he lived in and was a part of the exile uh, of the Babylon, first the Assyrian and then the Babylonian captivity. Uh, And he gathers together a group of people and, and they kind of raise their funds and all the people who decide that they're going to leave the creature comforts of where they are and head back this dangerous journey to get back to uh, the nation of Israel where Israel had been, get back to Jerusalem. Uh, and and the, the king even has said, you know, I'm, I'm going to provide you an escort. Do you want an armed escort? And, and Ezra turns it down because he says, no, we, we trust God is going to take care of us. Uh, but he didn't really know. There was still fear. Matter of fact, Ezra even admits it uh, in right around verse 22 or 23 of Ezra 8 that he admits that he he made this proclamation that God would take care of them. But he had no idea if that was the right decision or not. Uh, So look what happens in Ezra chapter 8, verse 21. Ezra says, with that group that was getting ready to go back, he said, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might listen humble ourselves before our God to seek from him the right way for us and for our little ones and for all our possessions. Notice that he says that we, we called this fast that we might humble ourselves before our God and that we might seek the right way from him, the right way from him as to the direction of our lives and for the direction for our families. And then the and direction from God as it related to their possessions. Notice this, that there was a specific time of fasting that was called in preparation for where they were going, not knowing how it was going to happen, not knowing if they had made the right calls in going back, not knowing if he had made the right calls in refusing uh, army and police protection for the people as they go back. He said that we started this off with a specific time of fasting. Listen, with all of the unknowns happening uh, in 2022, and we're in the middle of whatever's going on with Omicron and whatever's happening, uh, uh, whatever the reactions are going to be with that, um, we, we don't know what's going to happen. We're in the midst of trying to move this, this construction project forward in our new place. We don't know what's going to happen. So why not? The best thing that we can do is to turn our time and our attention to God to specifically humble ourselves before him, to, to, to choose, watch this, to choose to strip away all of the stuff that we think we are and we think we need and we think we have and to simply humble ourselves before our God and say, God, we don't know. We need to hear from you. We want to hear what you would have to say to us because we don't know what's going to happen and what's, what to expect. We don't even know how this is going to work out. But notice also that that Ezra says that they fasted and humbled themselves before God to seek his direction, to seek a focused path 
from God, that, that we wouldn't meander, that we wouldn't wander, but that we would be focused on the path that God has for us, that we would walk in the steps divinely or daily set by God, that, that, that we, would, we would be focused on that path, that we would know it, that we would see it so that we could focus on it. But then secondly, he said that we, we humble ourselves and we were in this fast to seek his directives for our families. That, in other words, that, that kind of connotes a faith-filled plan for our family. You know, too many times with, with our families, with our children, with our grandchildren, we're just kind of shooting from the hip. We're, we're hitting and missing. We're, we're, we're hoping for the best and doing the best that we can or recycling or repeating what was done with us. But here, Ezra said, we, we needed to seek God for the path for our families, that we would have a faith-filled plan, that the plan is set, but the plan is all about what we trust God to do, what we need God to do, what we're depending on God for, because we don't have how it's going to happen, but we have a plan that we entrust to God by faith. But then he also says, and I like this part, at the very end of the verse, he says that we were, we were seeking from God his way, the right way for our possessions. Um, that, that, <laughs> that says that we were fasting to seek after the right way to handle our stuff. That, that's fiscal propriety. That, that we would handle our money in the way that God would have us handle our money and our possessions. And so with that in mind, um, the, the way that we will fast this year, using what, what Ezra said, in similar circumstances to what we're facing now, uh, Ezra kind of lays out a, a, a three-pronged three or three-fold, or watch this, three-dimensional approach to fasting and humbling ourselves before God. And so with that in mind, I have, a, I have what I think is from God as it relates to a three-dimensional, a three-tiered approach for how we fast in this first month of the year. The first aspect is utilizing that last idea that Ezra brings up, that, that they were seeking the right way to handle their possessions, that fiscal propriety. And so I want to layer the way that we approach our fasting this year, starting with a financial fast, a three week long financial fast that would last from January the 9th all the way through the 29th. Watch this, that, that this financial fast is seeking to help us break habits of bondage in our financial lives. To, to help us avoid financial drama that tends to pop up when we don't handle our money the right way. To, to, to more than that, to be set free from a mindset of consumption. Uh, just because we have it, we've been spending it. Um, to, 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 to allow us to lay a foundation for a better financial future, to, to have peace in our lives and not have to lay up worrying about, do we have enough money for the month? Um, in other words, we want to lay a foundation to be better stewards of the things that God has blessed us with. He said that we sought God for the right way to handle our possessions. And so with that, across three weeks, I want us, starting on the ninth, uh, to begin to, to approach a financial fast, which would mean uh, a couple of things. It would mean, first of all, starting each day with what I'm calling pay. Pray act and yield that we would start off the day praying to ask God to help us do better to be mindful of what we're doing with our money that that we would um, then seek to, to approach it uh, with uh, recognizing that today I've got to make good sound decisions with the money that God has given me and and then acting upon that by how we do better with our finances on a day-to-day -day basis across three weeks and yielding to God's will and what God has to say about money across that process. So listen, you're, you're going to need an accountability partner. You need somebody who can ask you questions. How did you do today? Did, did, did you get that Starbucks or did you leave that alone? And, and then you're going to have to be an accountability partner for somebody else. 
uh, daily during those three weeks. We're going to have a financial passage that will be made available on our website that we want you to read and study and, and highlight and think through the principles of what God's Word has to say about our money, our understanding of money, and how we handle possessions as stewards. Uh, but then that also means, on an, on an, in an acting sense, on day-to-day -day basis for 21 days, uh, I want us to only use cash to make purchases. No, 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 no debit, no, no, no debt, no credit cards usage. Don't, don't buy some stuff now and hope that you can pay it off later. Use only cash. And if you don't have cash on hand to purchase it, then you don't need it. Um, d don't eat out. Don't, don't get Starbucks. Don't waste your food on, on, on stuff that you can't prepare and fix and fit into your weekly budget. Buy only what you need. There's no need to go on Amazon and, and try to get a whole bunch of stuff. Let's, let's live frugally. Let's live um, with what we need because God has promised to supply all that we need, not all the stuff that we want. And then review with your accountability partner two to three times a week. Okay, the, I did okay on Monday. I, I messed up and got some Starbucks on Tuesday. Uh, on Wednesday, I, I kind of messed up and I went on Amazon and I did this. And be able to hold each other accountable and encourage each other to do better the next time. So that's going to be three straight weeks of a financial fast where we would pay every day, that we would pray, that we would act and yield to God's will on a daily basis across three weeks hoping to break the hold of stuff. That It's okay to have stuff. God doesn't want stuff to have us. Okay, So that's going to be three weeks, starting on the 9th all the way through the 29th. But then on the 16th, on the 16th, the, the, the third Sunday of the month, um, we're going to incorporate, along with our financial fast, a, a total liquid fast, so that for one week, just seven days, that we would be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., that we would do liquids only during the day. That you, you can eat before 6 a.m., you can eat after, as long as it's moderately, as long as it's, you know, it's nothing extravagant, nothing extra stupid. And remember, you're still on a financial fast while you're also handling those other things. But then I'm also asking, incorporating in that, that food fast, that you and I would hold ourselves to three times a day of prayer. You can do it at 6 at 12 and at 9 that that would incorporate three days three times in every day that we would stop to pray it may not be long may not be drawn out but that you would pray three times every day for seven days and specifically use some time at night for bible study 8 p.m is the one that i'm choosing for me that i'm i'm stopping everything and from 8 p.m until prayer time at 9 i'm studying the word of god um, you can use the, the weekly prayer topics that are going to be uh, texted out at the beginning of every week. Uh, also, there'll be other prayer and study topics available on the website. If you don't know what to study during that, that nightly study time or that daily study time, there's going to be some things there for you and I to study and consider and spend some time in the Word, getting our, our minds right while we're also fasting from food and, and submitting and subjecting our flesh to fall under the Lordship of Christ, while at the same time still on a financial fast, we're going to incorporate another level where we bring it in and we, 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 we submit this flesh that we might hear from God, spend time with Him in prayer, hear from Him in prayer and in study of the Word. Then on the third week, starting on the 23rd, we will have a financial fast still going on, but then on that third week, we will start a media fast. Now the food fast will have ended, but we start the next week with a media fast because listen, our lives are so cluttered with information, with, with, uh, we, we're, we find ourselves seeking to fill holes in our lives with entertainment. Uh, how many times we, you don't need to grab your phone, but you grab your phone and you're scrolling through things. So we want to shut down the noise uh, that, that media and entertainment can create that we could focus on the directives that God has for both ourselves and our families and our finances. So during that week, the, the 23rd through the 29th, no social media. You don't need to post. You, you don't need to find out what other folks are posting. Uh, no, no TV. No, no web surfing that is not job and work related. 
no movies. <laughs> I know some of us have gotten accustomed to our streaming services. No, no movies, no, no games, no gaming systems, no games on your computer, no games on your phone. Um, no, no, no forms of entertainment that, that seek to distract us or to fill holes in our lives. That the only thing that we would allow would be uh, musically would be praise and worship that we incorporate as a part of our weekly study and our weekly, uh, our weekly going about. So that's a three-phased uh, or three-dimensional approach to worship, a financial fast, a week of food fasting, and a week of a media fast. And again, the goal is to humble ourselves before our God and seek the right way for ourselves, for our families, and for our possessions. That, that whatever 2022 may hold, that we would prepare ourselves spiritually, emotionally, and even financially, uh, that we would be in right alignment with God and that we won't allow stuff and things to clutter out the, His voice in our lives so that no matter what comes in 2022, we're following Him. We're following His voice and we've developed ourselves to know how to do that because we have sought the right way from Him. All right, listen, I know that's... that's um, a heavy load for some folks if you've never tried fasting. Listen, this is a different way of fasting for all of us. Uh, and so everybody's going to be on the same page on this one. I invite you, even if you've never tried fasting before, join in with us um, that, that we might humble ourselves before our God. There's too many unknowns. We, we can't get tripped up and tripped out on what's happening around us. So we want to seek the right way from Him in our lives, in our families, and even in our finances. And so I'm just going to ask that you would prayerfully consider joining us and being a part of this focusing ourselves um, because we're going to find ourselves having to push through some things in 2022. And we've got to be in the right mindset and right alignment with God to do so. All right? Listen, let, him, let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much that even uh, in challenging times like these, you're still on the throne. Thank you that your plan will never be thwarted and is never thrown off by anything or anyone. And so, Lord, we choose in this time of uncertainty around us to focus ourselves on you. I pray for every one of us that you would give us the strength to endure. I pray that you would give us the right ideas and the right concepts on how to chase after you and seek your face, seek your voice and seek your presence at the very beginning of this year so that we'll be used to doing it throughout the other 11 months of 2022. God, I thank you now for what you're going to say, what you're going to reveal, the chains that you will break, the bondages that we will be released from, the focus that you will give us, the capability to understand who we are in times like these like never before because of this time of sacrificing and humbling ourselves before you. God, if you'll be in the midst of this fast, we will follow you fully in everything that you say and everything that you do in 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. So now listen, as a part of that whole process, uh, we want to pause, as is our custom, on the first Sunday, that we might um, rightly align with him through a time of Holy Communion. I pray that you would uh, gather up your stuff that you may have there, um, simple crackers or, or, or whatever you may have available. Um, what's more important is not so much what constitutes the elements, what the substance is, but the focus on who communion is about. The Bible says that on that night that Jesus was betrayed, he asked his disciples to meet him in the upper room. And there the Bible says he took the elements that were available for Passover meal and he did something new with them. Can I declare to somebody in 2022, God is going to take what you already have, but he's going to do something new with them in your life. The Bible says that he took the simple wafer that was there, he blessed it, and he broke it before he gave it to them. He says, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Whatever you may feel might be broken in your life is God's actually doing something for you to institute something brand new in your life that he's going to use the broken pieces to put you and I back together again. And so, Father, I pray over this bread. I pray that you would bless it. I pray that you would sanctify it, that you would consecrate it now 
for the symbolic nature, the, the symbol that it is of your body, broken, beaten, bruised, and bloodied for us. Bless it and bless us as we partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take and eat together. The Bible says in the same manner Jesus took the cup. Again, he took what was already there, but he blessed it. He changed it. He redeemed what it was about. He said, this represents my blood, which will be shed for the remission, the removing, the taking away of your sin, the, the thing that has been an obstacle to you, my blood will be the thing that will take it away. And so Father, we pray now that you would bless this little bit of juice, this reminder of the blood of Jesus shed for us. We ask, oh God, that you would allow this blood to never lose its power in our lives as you remove obstacles and as you seal our relationship with you. May it be done because of the blood of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name, amen. Now let's take and drink together. And now uh, Paul says when we have done this, when we have allowed this opportunity for us to come together and to recognize the finished work of the Lord Jesus, he says there exists the power to heal, to reverse curses, to, to, to cast out sickness and disease. And so as a, as a connection point, stretch your hands toward your screen, to your device, and I declare by the shed blood of Jesus, by the power of our risen Savior, I decree and declare healing. I declare wholeness right now in the name of Jesus. I pray protection against every virus, every disease, every issue right now in the name of Jesus. May it be regulated, may it be subjected under the power of the cross and we declare healing and wholeness for the people of God and we declare it done and so in Jesus name, amen. Somebody ought to give God praise because the healing has come at the very beginning of your 2022. I decree and declare it over your life by the power of God. May you walk in the fullness of what God can do as you push through in 2022. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, it's offering time in house. In the house, it's time to bless God with the gifts of tithe, offering, or love offering. Whatever you have to give, whatever way in which you desire to give, there's four different ways that you can do that. We try to make it easy for all of us to be able to participate in uh, this worship of our God. Now, the Bible says that whenever we do this, we, we connect with God on a covenant level. That, that, that's deep because when you connect with God on a covenant level, you are saying, I am submitting to your covenant. So therefore, everything that comes as a reward for submitting to your covenant is now made available to me. And so now you have the power of the covenant of God released in your life because you have submitted to the covenant by giving, by sowing, and by tithing. And so I pray that you would prepare to receive what God has because you have submitted to his covenant. Can I pray for these gifts? Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify your name for this opportunity to worship you in giving. We pray, O oh God, that as we have submitted to your covenant, we now align ourselves for the release of all that comes as covenant participants because of what Jesus has released through his death, burial, and resurrection. And so now, God, we declare our lives and our year blessed because we have taken this time to obey your word. Now let it be unto us according to our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give as unto the Lord.
Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. We have done all that God has required of us to do. It may have been a little different. It may have been a little more relaxed, but listen, get ready for things to happen in strange ways in 2022. You know, God, God said to me, you know, it's going to be a great year. I said, but God, we're in the midst of Omicron uh, flare-ups and whatever. He said, stop looking at what's around you and watch what I do in 2022. Uh, and so I declare it's going to be a great year as long as you're not looking at what the news says is the conditions. But as you watch what God does in, around, and through your life in 2022. So may God bless you. May God open up doors. May you see an a, a, a entire change of what you anticipated was going to happen uh, because you were judging based upon 2021. But I declare God has brought us into a new year where we're going to see him operate like never before. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We magnify you. We glorify your great name. We're excited in spite of what we see. There's an anticipation in us that doesn't make sense with what we watched on the news. But God, our hope and our faith is in you. And even as we enter into this season of fasting and consecration, may you focus us. May, may you show us your right ways. May you bless us and our families and our possessions because we have taken this time to focus ourselves, humble ourselves, and seek after you. So, Lord, we submit to you our lives. We submit to you our year. We submit to you this consecration. Have your way and glorify yourself like never before in our lives, through our lives, and because of our lives. In Jesus Christ, in his name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. May God smile upon you. May you walk in favor as you push through in 2022.